Terry, I don't know what to make of the data because it's not inflation adjusted and we have a 7.1% inflation rate. So couldn't it just be that we have to spend more on all of this stuff we're buying for the holidays? Well, first of all, I'm thrilled with the numbers because last year was a record, uh, unbelievable, uh, eight and a half percent last last year in the holiday season. So to put that type of increase on top of last year's numbers, Sarah, I think was quite extraordinary. It just shows you that the consumer has money to spend and is willing to spend. And they certainly showed that in this last, in these last several weeks. What is your perception of where they're spending? Because there, there's a gap that's widening between goods and services, for sure. Definitely. And I, I think that that gap will accelerate. And, you know, we, we saw a drawback to goods during the pandemic, uh, but and, but it was it was strongly in favor of services prior to that. I see it re, re, uh, going back to that norm uh, again in 2023. So, so I, I see purchases on services and entertainment and uh, travel, hospitality, uh, food, restaurants, all those categories, I think, are going to benefit um, in 2023 when that shift occurs. I feel like one of the biggest questions for the market next year, Terry, is what happens with the U.S. consumer? Does she hang in there? Because the story of this year is that, yes, the growth was, the growth was better. It was better than the rest of the world. But now we're dealing with not only the inflation shock, but a rate shock as well. The housing market is hurting. The stock market is hurting, which hurts people's retirement accounts. Can the, home, can the U.S. consumer hold up amid all these headwinds next year? The answer to your question, can the consumer hold up, is yes. Will they hold up? Uh, let me just talk that through a little bit. Uh, so there, there, there's clearly more money in the savings accounts in total, uh, for, particularly for this middle household income consumer, than there was in 2019. And that's thank you to the stimulus packages that were generated in 2020 and 2021. There's still plenty of money. I'm talking over a trillion dollars in additional savings with consumers. And so that's a positive. They're spending it like uh, they're, <laughs> they're spending it aggressively. And that's yeah. you know, been good for, for the economy. It's keeping the economy going, Sarah. But mm -hmm. the one number, and by the way, wages have been good. Okay, so, so obviously with the rate, uh, wages rising 6%, uh, that's a big plus to put even more money back into consumers' pockets. However, to your point, with inflation being as high as it has been, and it's ver it varies in different categories, it's taking a lot of that discretionary opportunity to spend away. I think that will be particularly true in 2023. Christmas, Hanukkah, the, the holiday season, Thanksgiving, is an event-driven activity when, when consumers do all they can to come out and, and, and give and, and give, you, give that great gift to, to their friends and family. Uh, that's behind us. And so, so I, I do think we'll see a bit of a slowdown. Again, that shift will, I think, will occur uh, into more travel. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll be able to travel again, uh, but, but more right. travel, more hospitality uh, in the coming year.